every Christian, even myself, has probably wondered at one time or another, how do I hear from God? The question is natural because we want to know what God has in store for us. And as Christians, we are eager to please our Heavenly Father. Stick around to hear what the Bible says about the different ways in which God speaks to his people. Welcome to Biblical Guidance for Living, where we promote a lifestyle of faith in Jesus through God's Word. Hello, ladies. How are you today? Doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a little chilly, but other than that, I'm doing great. Good. Good. So I am so excited about this um, episode. So let's just say God speaks to his people in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. When God speaks, the way he communicates is often unique to the individual. So that means that we all are not going to hear from God in the exact same way. For instance, Moses heard from God through a burning bush. I probably will never hear from God through a burning bush. No. Joseph heard from God through dreams. To hear God's voice, we must belong to God. Jesus did say in his word, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. That's in John 10, 27. Those who hear God's voice are those who belong to him. Those who have been saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the sheep who hear and recognize his voice because they know him as their shepherd. So if we are to recognize God's voice, we must belong to him. With that being said, our anchor scripture is John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I want you to think about that verse. And I want you to think about when your father calls you out among a crowd of children, you know exactly when your father is speaking to you. So the conversation is going to be on what are some ways believers hear from God. Now, I want the audience, as you're watching this episode and you're listening, think about ways you have heard from God and why it is important to hear from God. So let's start this awesome conversation on the different ways that God's people, let me stress, that God's people, believers, we're we'll here from him. What are some possible ways? Well, there's several possible ways, Tanny, but I just wanted to um, point out one thing. You made a very good point. You can hear your father's voice. Any of us who've had fathers, when our father calls, we know his voice, we hear it, we respond to it. Now, we can choose to ignore his voice. We can come to him if he's calling us. We can do whatever we desire to do, but we know it's his voice. So it is the same with Christians. If we belong to God, we know his voice. It is a very small prompting, okay? He doesn't usually scream at us ever, right? And so in order for us to hear his voice clearly and to discern it from among a whole lot of other things that are going on, we have to have to know his word. In the Old Testament, we, they didn't have his word. They had his presence. His spirit would visit people. As you said, Tammy, he would speak in the bushes. He would come down physically. Jesus, pre-incarnate Jesus came down and spoke to different right. folks throughout the Old Testament. But today we have his word. And the way he speaks in this age, in these last days, is through his word. So if we don't know his word, we're not studying it, we won't hear his voice because we won't know who he is. Reading his word tells us who God is, what he wants from us, what we need to be doing for him in service to him, why he created the earth, why he did a lot of things. All of that is part of his character and who he is. And he will show us who he is and reveal himself in his word. So. A lot of times people will say, you know what? The word, word does not apply to today. My situation, my circumstance, that's not true. Not mm -hmm. true at all. 
the principles are the same. The circumstance may have changed, but the principles are the same. As an example, who, who should I marry? You know, how should I decide who to marry? Well, if I'm studying God's word, I will realize that he wants me to marry a godly man or woman. Mm -hmm. He wants me to, to marry somebody with integrity. He wants me to marry someone who knows him as uh, their Lord and Savior. And if I'm marrying a man that he's going to lead my home, and if I'm marrying a woman that she is going to be there to respect me and support me as the woman in the home. Two different roles, right? We don't know that. We won't know that. And that's how our marriages should look unless we are reading his word and, he, and studying his word. So his word is essential, I think, for the first, for, for us to understand what he's saying to us today. It's already in his word. We don't have to worry or guess about it. It's there. And I like what you said about the <laughs> word, because even as you listen to the word, you, you can read the word and realize that he uses other people. And it reminds me of the scripture, iron sharpens iron. Well, if the word of God says iron sharpens iron, that means that other believers can help other believers. So that means that God can speak to Andrea and God could speak to me from Andrea or Il Ilana, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're right about the word of God, because everything that he says in there, and it just made me think about that when people say, how do I hear from God? God has multiple ways and he does use his people to speak to you. You just have to be open and be willing to hear. But let me preference. He's going to send a believer. The words from that person is come is going to balance and it's going to go right along with the word of God. It's not going to be someone just telling you what you want to hear. So how will I know if and God has sent me? Because if Andrew doesn't speak from the word of God, then I question that. And if she's just speaking from her own opinion. Right. And let me just add a scripture to that, Tammy, that kind of explains the importance of the word for us to hear from God. So 2 Timothy verse, um, chapter 3, verse 16 says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So the purpose of scripture is to teach us and to show us. And if we want to hear from God, because he wants us to live lives that glorify him, we got to hear. We got to, you know, learn from his word what it is he's telling us to do. Right. Right. Yeah, it is. Um, it is so important um, because that's how he communicates to us. And if we mm -hmm. don't know it, just like you said, we will miss it. I remember a time when um, my sis, my mom used to do retreats for women uh, back in the day and we would go on retreats and and the ladies would say, I heard the Lord tell me this. I heard the Lord tell me that. And my sister and I would be like. Is this mic on? Because we talking to the Lord, but we don't, he ain't saying nothing <laughs> back to us. Well, uh, you know, forward fast to where we are now. I know why I didn't hear anything because I wasn't in his word. I wouldn't have been able to tell you if it was him talking to me or somebody else talking to me. And so it's very critical. And so that's the kind of question that I have. Yes, God speaks to us through his word, but how can we know that it's him and not our own desires or him and the devil telling us something. And, and I mean, there's pretty clear evidence, you know, the Lord is not going to go tell you to do something that is against his word. He's that's not from him, but I'm talking about when, um, when what we want and what he wants align so closely that you still are not sure. Is that him or is that me? You know, like when our, when our things are aligned. So that's been a challenge for me. But what I've learned to start doing was to stay in my word and then wisdom from other believers. Because what normally has happened is that what I'm thinking or what I'm hearing God is confirmed by somebody else. Like I wouldn't have talked to them. I wouldn't have yeah. said. And mm -hmm. then that would have been confirmed. Right. Or it might be wisdom that I hear from my pastor, like I'm in church. And I hear something cross the pulpit that's like, oh, 
you know, that's what mm-hmm. I was just praying about or just what I was just thinking about. And pastors doing a, a sermon about that. Right. Or even in my prayer time, when you just like you mentioned that quietness or that peace that comes across um, because you know, God is the one that knows our plans. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, mm-hmm. for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So he's the one that's going to be telling us. That. So he's talking to us. We just need to be able to discern and, and hear from him. And, you know, I just love when um, you said that, because I think about, well, usually when God kind of uh, coincides with what I want, then I know for sure it's God. But when God <laughs> don't coincide with what I want, then I start questioning, not did God really tell me not to do that? Don't you guys find it interesting that when it goes along with the word and it goes along with what we want? Oh, I heard from God. Thank you, Jesus. We have it. But. Andrea, as soon as God tells me no, and sometimes he tells me no, are those the times we have to ask ourselves, are we questioning God? And we should not question if we're hearing from God because God knows what's best for us. I just thought about that when you said that. I said, yeah, you know, I've done that before myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, know this is good for people. I'm helping people. I'm doing something good. This has got to be what God wants me to do. And all the time he's saying no or not right now, Tammy, maybe wait. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I heard from God. Right. Or it is so funny because you are right. We know automatically when they line up right, we're like, OK, I got to do it. But when it's off at us, we are the ones like, nah. But God's like, yes, you know, then we like, really? Um, so, so, so very funny. But, uh, you know, in in our relationship, we just have to position ourselves, I think, also yes. to hear from him. Right. Right. And we have to to make sure that we're doing that either through worship, um, meditating on studying his word, sometimes even journaling. Like right. I'll write down some things. And in, even in that process, I hear the Lord, you know, moving right. and speaking, yeah. you know, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I know I've had times when I've decided <laughs> what I'm going to do and I've gone off and done it and it doesn't work. Yes. And so <laughs> here we are mm-hmm. in the mess, in the midst of the mess, yes. but God is good. <laughs> Yes, you repent, is. you ask him to forgive, and you I you just say, look, God, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I knew, I knew, because, you know, the Holy Spirit is so good. He will prompt you, even in the midst of doing the wrong thing. Yes. That's not right. Yes. That conviction. And whether no we joke. listen or not, doesn't matter. He's going to do exactly what he does as the Holy Spirit. He is placed inside of every single believer to bring us to truth. Yes. And the only truth he speaks is what God says. That <laughs> so, is so true. If that's the case and I ignore it, then I need to recognize the consequences for not listening. Right. right. But, you know, if we're a believer and we can't hear God or we think we don't hear God, mm-hmm. we need to look at ourselves. It's right. not God. No. Because he hasn't no. stopped speaking. No. His word is still there. He still speaks through people. You know, all the things we've talked about. We need to look at ourselves and figure yeah. out what it is we are not doing that allows us to communicate effectively with our father. Yeah. With our father. I found that when I don't hear from him, it's because I have moved away from him. Yeah. I have stopped reading the word as much as I need it to. And just like a relationship, if you don't work at it, you could lose it. And just like hearing from God and knowing God's voice, the longer and longer you stay away from that word then it's going to be harder and harder for you to hear from him. But it's not that he has stepped away. It's that you have been the one that stepped away. So we have to wonder that. And ladies, when you were talking about um, a retreat, I just, I love talking about God, but just to hear from him. And I don't know if you ladies came to the retreat, but we had a retreat one year and we had a bonfire. And in that bonfire was an angel. Yes. And someone at the right time, at the right moment, took a picture of the bonfire and it was an angel. And I mean, we were just like blessed because God has spoke to us. 
you know what? He had a message for us and he wanted us to hear that message and know that, hey, listen, this is what you need. You know, I'm going to give you even some more evidence because uh, God knows that, you know, we're like Thomas, like doubting. We want to see the holes. You know, we want a little bit of proof. But I mean, that was, um, I have to say, one of the most powerful yes. ways in which I have ever in my life heard from God. And so you can't pin God in a box and say it's going to be this way, that way, or that way. Like I said at the beginning, he speaks to everybody in an individual way, in a unique way. And his way is always the right way. Yeah. Yep. So remember God is I good. Still have, I still have All that right. picture. You, I, I still have that uh -huh. picture too. I need to blow it up. It's so nice. awesome. <laughs> um, so the call to action. Believers hear from God through his word. That's in 2 Timothy 3.16 and Psalms 119.11. If you don't get anything from this episode, just understand you hear from God through his word word. This is the clearest and the most effective way God communicates with his people. The Bible is God's manual for God's people. If you want to know how things work perfectly, you need to read the manual, which means you need to read the Bible. From the Bible, we learn to love what God loves, do what God does, and value what God values. The more we learn from God through his word, the better we will know him, understand his will, and recognize his voice. So starting today, read the word of God to ensure you know the ways God can speak to you. And even better, you can discern when God is speaking to you. There's also some scriptures, and I'll just read one or two of them that we're going to add for you. God does speak to us through his word. I told you that. He can speak to us through a gentle whisper, which is 1 King 19, 12. He speaks through us, and I think Andrea even miss, mentioned this, through the Holy Spirit. You know, that prompts us and tells us even when we're doing wrong. That's Isaiah 30, 19 through 21. There are more that are going to be listed. So you would definitely want to um, watch the episode and look to find these. But I want to and we want to thank you for joining us for mm -hmm. another, another episode of Biblical Guidance for Living. Um, you should now know how to hear from God. You have to be one of God's children, a believer, and to study his word. If you like the episode, hit the like button. If you have a comment, leave a comment. We would love to know throughout the week how you have heard from God. It would just really um, excite us to hear that you are now hearing and you're able to discern God's voice. If you have not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe today. Thank you once again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Biblical Guidance for Living.